This is the NVIDIA GB300 NVL72. This one rack has 72 NVIDIA Blackwell Ultra GPUs. It's all liquid cooled and 36 Grace CPUs. This is the pinnacle of what scale up can do for the AI factory. 37 terabytes of memory here, 20 terabytes of fast HBM3E GPU memory, and 17 terabytes of CPU memory. That's 2592 ARM Neoverse V2 cores, all connected via the NVIDIA ConnectX 8 SuperNix and fifth generation NVIDIA NVLink. In this one rack, it's 100 teraflops of raw floating point 64 compute, but that's not as far as scale up can take us. NVIDIA's innovation is as much about the software stack too as it is about the hardware. The new number formats like NVFP4 is what brings up to a 50x leap in the AI factory output. Power and you've got the liquid cooling and like you have the full retro conversion stuff assuming you can get the electricity. I think that there's a lot of challenges with um, deploying AI infrastructure in general. Um, we do try to, try to streamline it with our data center building block solutions and. Um, the fact that we're trying to incorporate a lot of services to, to make it really seamless. That being said, like, it's GB300 is a rack scale solution. 72 GPU and VLink demand, you know, by itself is like not something that everybody's going to require. Uh, there's even, uh, you can even consider something like an HGX based solution as, as another step down from that with, where it incorporates an 8 GPU and VLink domain. Um, and then, you know, scaling beyond that will be going over the uh, uh, compute fabric. So I think it's really about figuring out like what you need um, in terms of your workload because not everybody requires like the max interconnected, um, you know, 72 GPUs and, and VLink. Um, HDX has traditionally been that flexible kind of sweet spot where yeah. you can do uh, inference, you can do training uh, and things like that. But I think that we've seen a lot of uh, uh, enterprise needs kind of starting to shift um, away from um, uh, the training side and more towards like actual using, um, you know, deploying inference and things like that. Yeah, production, fine production applications, fine tuning as yeah. well. Yeah. A single five second video sequence needs about 4 million tokens. Last generation Hopper, this would take about 90 seconds to generate that many tokens. Blackwell Ultra can do it real time with foundational models such as NVIDIA Cosmos. This rack from Supermicro is scaled up as far as current generation technology can take us. But the use case for AI demands more tokens, hence scale out. You just add more racks. And that's why this is one SKU from Supermicro. An AI cluster can have dozens, hundreds, or even potentially thousands of these racks. NVLink bandwidth is already 130 terabytes per second. It's gonna meet the challenge of scaling up and scaling out your AI factory. This is GB300 NVL72. And this is the main building block of the modern AI factory. There's 72 GPUs in here. There's a lot of infrastructure we need to talk about. And uh, I'm joined by... Amin Ribai from Supermicro, Director of Technology Enablement. He knows all the speeds and feeds, he knows all of the stuff, and this is, this is one SKU. So you got 72 GPUs, that's the name, GB300 and VL72. Uh, all GPUs are connected with the NVLink. You got the N nine NV switches here, eight and 10, total 18 compute trays, every compute tray with two hosts, every host with two GPUs, so 72 GPUs. Programming-wise, these GPUs are visible like virtually one single large GPU. Uh, this is one SKU. We literally ship and order this part number, either with the in-rack CDU, which can handle 250 kilowatts, or with the in-row CDU, which can handle 1.8 megawatt. Uh, this rack consumes 142 kilowatt uh, you got the power shelves here, top of rack. Uh, it comes pre-cabled. This is literally one SKU. You just plug it in, plug it into cooling and power and networking, and you're good to go. And the networking is not the fabric networking. Well, you would plug it into the network fabric, but you also have the storage fabric and everything else. Storage is a really interesting part of the story there. Great CPUs powering this. So this is a full NVIDIA solution. ARM-based uh, for east-west traffic, either in Finiband or Ethernet. Now, walk me through the connections here. This, these are 800 gig fiber optic, 1.6. Yes, so the diff, one of the difference between GB300, which is this rack, and GB200, is the, uh, the, the connectivity for east-west traffic. GB300 uses ConnectX 8 with dual port, 800 gigabit for each port. 1.6 terabit per pair. Exactly. That's nuts. Plus a blue filtry. 
That is, uh, well, Bluefield 3 is for... North-south traffic converged uh, infrastructure. So scale up and scale out, as Jensen likes to say. Was like we've scaled up as far as we can, now we have to scale out. And you guys have configurations with this ready to go that are up to 30 of these racks? You can go up to 1,024 racks, which is perfectly defined by NVIDIA, and we can go beyond, either wow. with InfiniBand or Ethernet. Wow, a thousand racks so connected fiber optically as one giant GPU fabric. So a thousand racks is like 150 something megawatt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have seen purchase orders where it's like we're planning for the gigawatt data center and it's like, oh, oh yeah. it's like we're building next to a nuclear facility. Exactly. Oh, each one of these has E1 storage, tons of local E1 storage. Yes, E1 storage. Uh, the particular, of course, use case here is that you would lock, we would want to connect uh, Converged uh, infrastructure uh, storage uh, through well, your, the your blue fields make it easy to low overhead do NVMe over fabric. Exactly, and uh, we work with all the the, the partners uh, that uh, are so are supported in this platform, DDN, Weka, VAS, etc. So it doesn't really matter what your um, your enterprise grade storage solution provider is. This will integrate very nicely with with those kinds of things. Exactly, we have blueprints with all SDS uh, partners. Um, so when, you know, when you've got a customer that is setting up one of these, or they're planning an NVL72 deployment, what does that look like? Is it just, all right, give us your physical facilities and power, like how much do you guys help out with the uh, customer? That, that's that? a very good question. I want to say about half the projects are about actually a data center build out in addition to a, a cluster build out. So we would size the cluster, then, uh, solution, the data center, build out, the power, the cooling of the entire uh, Here's everything the electricians center. need to know. Here's everything your physical plant people need to know. Here's how heavy these are going to be. you got a raised floor. Can you handle the weight? <laughs> <laughs> but the in-row CDU is also a, re a really fun option. I want to talk about the in-row CDU as an option, especially for like retrofit or conversions, because it really opens up a lot of options in terms of managing cooling for something like this. I can see a lot of copper and aluminum in here. This feels like it could dissipate kind of a lot of heat. Exactly. It looks like a big radiator, and it is a big radiator. This is what we call the liquid-to-air sidecar, L2A sidecar. You will want to use this in an air-cooled data center where uh, you want to uh, still install solutions which only come as liquid-cooled, such as GB300 and VL72 that we talked about. So typically, we'll have customers, while we're helping them build their next-gen uh, liquid-cooled data center, we enable them with the liquid-to-air sidecar to uh, POC a liquid-cooled rack, right? The only way to put a liquid-cooled rack into an air-cooled data center is to use this thing. And so this thing can dissipate almost uh, two full uh, GB300 racks worth of heat? Yes, it can uh, cool up to 200 kilowatt worth of heat. And uh, one, you might be wondering, like, why would the design, like, you know, surely there's enough people out there that um, designing for this density doesn't make sense when you're going to have, you know, liquid and air, air handling right next to where the, this, the, the compute is. But the problem is, back to what I was saying before, it's like it's kind of a speed of light problem. In order for the compute to go fast, all of the compute needs to be as close as possible to all of the other compute and you want to minimize the latency. The best way to minimize the latency is to get it all physically close together. But also, the next generations, you can't not do it with liquid cooling, and so you're going to have to get comfortable with liquid-cooled racks. And so this kind of gets you there, but a better design would be something like the, the Supermicro liquid cooling tower. Those can deal with five megawatts. Exactly. Up, up to. And so, but this is nice because you can retrofit it into an existing solution and you can, you can put these alongside of your, your uh, you know, your GB300 NVL72 and it gets the job done, but it doesn't make sense to do a custom design for uh, GB300 NVL72 that's just for air cooling because it introduces a whole bunch of problems with, right. you know, it's, it, it just, we don't want to do that. You're not going to have a cluster, hundreds of racks with hundreds of light, li 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 liquid to air sidecars, obviously. Right, yeah. But this is still an incredible engineering win in terms of like, oh yeah, we can deal with dissipating 200 watts of heat in a tiny compact package that can be deployed in row. Exactly, and think about it, GB200, GB300, and VL72, they only come in liquid-cooled rack form factor. The only way you can use them is 
through accepting and introducing the liquid cooled rack into your air cooled yeah. or liquid cooled data center. Yeah, and the 8U uh, B300 from Supermicro, that is the pinnacle. If you have to have air cooling, that is the pinnacle of air cooled performance, and you still get eight ConnectX NICs, but it's 10U, not one ish or two ish. I guess, let's see, for eight GPUs, what would that be like? Four? The, 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 the air cooled is ATU. The B300 air cooled is uh, ATU. And then, well, and the 19 inch rack is 4, and then, then the, the OCP is The regular AGX liquid cooled is 4U, and yeah. then the, two, the OCP is 2OU. 2OU, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You remember everything. <laughs> I, I try. Fun time. A little slow, a little slow sometimes, but I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll, do, I'll make you a quiz at the end. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need that for this video. <laughs> All right, so whenever you have a liquid cooling uh, ready data center, and uh, of course you still have some air-cooled racks, right? Like with storage, with networking, you will want still to leverage the liquid cooling infrastructure you have in the data center. This is the solution for that. This is a rear door heat exchanger from Supermicro. Um, as you can see, it's pretty massive. Uh, it can cool up to 80 kilowatts. Uh, you, you don't have to use it in an air-cooled rack as I said, with storage or networking. You can even improve the efficiency of hybrid-cooled racks, like GB300 and VL72 here. Yeah, you'll have your power supplies and things like that. All this is still going to generate a little bit of heat. It's not, yep. even though it's liquid-cooled, you're still going to have air through the system, but this is going to capture all the heat from that before it enters the hot aisle. And this is a much better solution because you can just carry the heat outside and deal with it there. But look at all that copper. We're not, we're not producing enough copper. There's so much copper. This is heavy, guys. <laughs> and you can see the CDU down there at the bottom. Yep. 250 kilowatt CDU. Yeah, so the coolant that circulates in the data center is different than the coolant that circulates in the rack. And that is nice. From a maintenance standpoint, that's nice. From a, the coolant in the data center is not gonna murder your equipment in the rack. It's very nice. NVIDIA ends this rack with the new X800 Quantum InfiniBand switch. Sharp V4, adaptive routing, congestion-aware telemetry. On paper, all of this sounds like pure jargon. This is the next thing that we're moving into. Networking. It's the next most lowest hanging fruit. And honestly, unless you're deep in the woods, well, it really is jargon. The real story here isn't the buzzwords, though. It's the pattern. I mean, AI factory, I've, I've probably said it a dozen times. It sounds like marketing nonsense. I thought so, too. But now I get it. With Blackwell, NVIDIA has a different aim. This generation is not the generation that, that is just scaling and scaling up and scaling out. This is the generation where NVIDIA has laid a blueprint to standardize for the future. GB300 NVL72, understand that this is the pinnacle of performance and density from NVIDIA. It's for the hyperscalers and the implementers that need the most advanced and dense AI system that you can get. From here and to the future, the density is only going to go up. Sure, 140 kilowatts per rack today sounds like a lot, but tomorrow it's going to be 600 kilowatts a rack and beyond. It took more than a decade for the standard data center designs to move from planning for 20 kilowatt racks to 40 kilowatt racks. So while the pace of the industry demands are moving at a dizzying pace, NVIDIA and Supermicro are rising to that challenge. For environments that do not demand the same density, but want to access the same cutting edge technology, ConnectX NICs, GPU compute fabric, and more, there is B300, the same Blackwell GPU fabric, but that fits within existing corporate infrastructure. If GB300 NVL72 is the flagship design reaching into the future, then B300 is the accessible, deployable in both liquid and air. Uh, it's the workhorse for the AI factory, in other words. Be sure to check out our other videos to see what NVIDIA and Supermicro are up to, not just with this, but you know, all AI factory hardware and the software stack as well. The software part of the story is arguably just as important, if not more important than the hardware side of the story, because the software can reach much farther into the future than the hardware can. But that's all we've got for this one. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1 Techs, and we'll see you in the next one.